Hello and welcome back to Vlandian Night Adventures. And we're going to be taking Lagata in this uh, beginning little part of the episode, or at least I hope so, because, uh, well, the Batanians actually wanted to have peace against us. <laughs> I say that like it's some kind of aggression, yes. Anyway, it technically is, actually, if you think about it, because um, they're trying to force peace on us so that we don't take some of their stuff, obviously. So, generally... I guess their peace agreement is kind of aggressive, hilariously enough. Although, that's only if you have that certain kind of perspective, you know, if you think about how opportunistic we could potentially be when the Batanians are just that much weaker than we are. And if they're offering us a peace agreement, then it must mean that they think they're on the back foot. They, you know, they, they may be thinking that they're weaker than they actually are, and uh, if we then end up losing an, uh, a pretty massive army like the one that I have right here under my command, then we are going to be in a pretty bad situation. Anyway, we're going to be giving this to Mr. Mantios by the looks of things. I'm actually starting to get a decent amount of influence right now. I also have a good amount of gold too. I was very tempted by the Batanian's offer of peace, to be honest, because I thought to myself, okay, what if I make peace with them? Then who am I gonna be at war against? Well, at that point, I'm gonna be at war against the Kuzate, as far as I'm aware, as well as I think the Western Empire, and that is pretty much it. So I would have to travel a very, uh, well, shall we say, a fair distance away for us to be able to get into any kind of battle. And as you can see, once again, they are wanting to pay. <laughs> I, I, okay, I don't, I don't know what, what's going on with this. I, I think it is the Diplo Diplomacy Fixes mod. I think it is the, the, the Diplomacy Fixes mod that is causing uh, us to be able to even have the opportunity for a peace agreement. It could be that the developers of Bannerlord themselves implemented some kind of peace war reparations thing, but I think it's probably the Diplomacy Fixes mod. And if it is, then what I'd like to see from the mod is an increase in war, war reparations because it just doesn't make sense for them to be offering 50 dinars for a peace agreement, especially if they're on the back foot. You know, if they're winning, then obviously, you know, I'm, I'm perfectly happy to take the 50 dinars to stop them from beating us over the head with their wonderful wooden sticks. Yes, but anyway, I'm going to be declining this once again because they actually did try once before to do that and hopefully we're going to be able to show them the might of the Vlandian backstabbery because that's what we tend to do, isn't it? You know, the, the Vlandians are all about backstabbing each other, trying to, you know, get all kinds of personal gain and, and things like that. I've actually been trying to root that out a little bit. Oh. Well, the Western Empire is proposing peace. They don't have any war reparations whatsoever to be providing us, but that's absolutely fine. I'm, I'm happy with that, to be honest. I think that if we can... Um, basically, what I've been attempting to do is I was actually trying to persuade Krotor to join us. Because Krotor here, as you can see by his wonderful face, is actually a pretty good vassal. I, I think he's a pretty good vassal, and I'd love to see him join us as you can see right here, I actually attempted to send messengers to him twice to see if I could maybe get him into a conversation outside of his army. But unfortunately, he was always in his army, and uh, as a result, we weren't able to do anything with him. However, hmm, yes, this is kind of a shame. They're actually at war against the Batanians and the Kuzate. I actually thought that they might be... Uh, they might be less inclined to be in a war, considering they are so incredibly small right now, but, oh well, never mind. Can't really do much about that. And as you can see, we also have a 100% support for war declaration against the Western Empire. We only have a 5% in uh, terms of attacking the Northern Empire, which is a stark contrast, is it not? Wow, cannot believe that. Well, I suppose I can. I believe it's actually come to a point now where even if my trebuchets get destroyed, I'm going to I'm going to be able to construct them very very quickly indeed and I don't even have to worry about going back into reserve or anything like that because my engineering skill is actually at a point now where we can pretty much not worry about that anymore, which I think is pretty cool. Anyway, um, I believe my engineering skill has maybe leveled up to 175. Yeah, there we go. My engineering is now 177 in fact. As you can see, bombardment damage against other siege engines 
will be increased by 20%. I like it. I like it. Now, this, in my opinion, the 200 skill trait, that is amazing. I think, uh, I mean, obviously I have no idea what kind of increased damage that is. Is it 50%? Is it 5%? Is it 1000%? We don't know. Obviously, we don't know. So, obviously, that's going to be... Um, and a little bit of a bone of contention there for me, but it would be amazing if it was something higher than 20% or maybe even just 20%. I think that would probably be pretty good because it seems like they like the uh, the 20% mark. As you can see from Siege Engines having 20% more hit points, bombardment damage increased by 20%. But it's kind of weird that they didn't disclose how much this is actually going to do, but I can only hope that it's going to be about 20, 50 maybe. maybe I, I mean, 50 I think is a bit overpowered, but... Uh, well, it is a single player game, so I, I, I don't know whether you can really <laughs> that's the thing. There's always a there's always a conversation to be had uh, amongst the gaming community in single player games. Is it uh, quote unquote overpowered to have an ability in a single player experience that is really, really powerful when most people will probably end up getting it in the end anyway, unless obviously you decide to spec a companion into engineering. Because if you spec a companion into engineering, then obviously they're going to be the ones getting the overpowered um, skill. But I mean, that's the point. It depends. It depends. Um, but that's that's also the thing that you've got to, got to remember, because even if, even if some of these traits and things are extremely strong and maybe overpowered in some senses, then you would probably be able to not take them. You know, that's the point. You can, you can choose. You know, you can choose what you. Oh, hello. Well, why are you coming out here? This is. <laughs> what? Why? Why? Why are they? Uh... This is an extremely weird turn of events. But anyway, because it is a sandbox, role, you know, RPG. I was going to say role-playing game, but yeah, because it is a sandbox RPG in many ways, you know, stats determine how effective you are throughout the entire game, then having the choice of whether you take this ability or not is up to you, of course. You don't, you, you don't have to do that. Personally, I think it's a lot of fun to have those kinds of things available, because if you have those things available, you're going to be much more likely to have fun in general and not feel as though the game is trying to penalize you in an artificial manner. Do you know what I mean? So if, um, if for example, that uh, that bombardment damage or, what, or the uh, increased damage against the walls... Oh, we might have some problems here. Yeah, I would actually like to get up the stairs here if at all possible and hopefully not get myself killed. There we go. Okay, don't get killed now, Bruce. Please don't get killed. Uh, okay, oh, there we go. Perfect, perfect. Oh, did you see that? He came in and I moved just at the last moment and he got himself sliced. Oh, yes, he did. That was perfect. Absolutely perfect. Oh. He's being a bit careful. Look at that. He's being a bit careful because I got a little bit of a hit on him. Nice. Took him down. Oh, took him down too. I'm actually really surprised that we're getting so lucky here because I'm pretty low in HP and I personally feel like I would have been shot multiple times. Um, <laughs> I think I would have... I'm, I'm expecting it, you know. I'm expecting it. But you know, these are the actual scenes that I really love out of Bannerlord, because look at this. This is the kind of thing that you basically dreamed about, I would say, if you were a fan of Warband at all and you were playing that, and then you were thinking to yourself, okay, this siege is cool and everything, you know, because let's face it, some of the mods in Warband do, um, shall we say, revitalize the siege combat, you know. More specifically, I'm talking about Gekka Kujo, I'm talking about uh, Warsword Conquest, and uh, a, a handful of others that have completely turned 
the siege combat on its head. And that's what you want, you know? You want to be able to try to change the siege combat in Warband as much as you can because the base game, yeah, I mean, it, it has uh, functional siege combat and I would definitely say that it is fun for the first, well, the first couple of sieges, let's just say that, because, um, well, <laughs> in the end, when you have done, I don't know, tens, maybe even hundreds of sieges by the end of a campaign, if you're doing a native uh, native playthrough or something like that, um, you're probably going to be a bit tired of uh, the, you know, the vanilla siege combat and uh, yeah so you know seeing all of those troops streaming towards the walls and going in to the holes in the walls that we ourselves have created with bombarding them and, and so on and so forth that's really really cool in my opinion at least maybe you don't think so but I think that really does add that huge satisfaction feeling because most of the time you're just going to be killing people and you're not really you know you're going to be killing people in the walls and you're not really going to be you know sitting back and enjoying uh, basically smelling the roses you know you're going to take a little bit of time to stop and, and smell the roses but yeah uh, I think that that is actually a very cool effect that they have going on there you know being able to have that amazing amounts of units just streaming in there it's really Oh, it's a sight to see, you know, it's a sight to see. Anyway, we're going to go in here. Mainly because I want all my um, all my people to uh, place some of their spare troops in the garrison. And uh, we're also going to be now selling all of this. Okay, there's, oh, 27,000. Oh, crazy. That is nice. And then we'll sell all of this as well. Ooh, it looks like we're getting to the end of our looted armor. Look at this. Oh, I'm really surprised we actually got there eventually. Very nice indeed. And now let's go into the smithy as well, because I did say that we were going to do a little bit more smithing. Where's Thorgood? Where are you, Thorgood? Ah, oh, apparently you're not on the first... Uh, you're not on the first page, you imbecile. Oh, well, never mind. I guess well, I, I can just do a little bit. Oh, we have so much hardwood. Look at that. That's crazy. That's crazy. Okay. Well, let's just do it. Let's do it. Go, 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 go. I really wish I had the improved smithing mod. I'm not entirely sure if that works anymore, but if you have improved smithing, then I envy you because you're going to be able to select an option that is basically like, what is it now? It's like 20 hardwood for 15 charcoal or something like that. It's like a bulk, uh, bulk crafting thing, so you don't have to click as much, which I think is a really nice quality of life improvement anyway um i'm gonna actually go into our party screen here try and find where mr thorgood of doncaster is there he is and we will now place him at the top because we need someone that is slightly proficient in smithing to be able to make this next part work because i'm out of energy of course um, so we've got enough charcoal now, so I don't really need anything more. So let me actually just take a quick look. Oh, we have a lot of, um, we have a lot of fine steel, actually. Look at that. That's actually pretty cool. Okay, so wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me actually just see something real quick here. Okay, so I'm going to use this guy to smelt a little bit. And we're just going to smelt pretty much everything that we have. Uh, this is another time when I wish I'd have the improved smithing mod. I think there is a thing like smelt all. Isn't there a smelt all button? I'm not entirely sure, but there you go. Now I have run out of stamina on this guy as well. <laughs> uh, classic, isn't it? Okay, there we go. Ah, oh, there's just, there's just so much. All right, so we only have one tier five blade available to us. I'm going to try to make it work. Because obviously difficulty and damage are the main two uh, statistics that I think we would need to utilize here. So I'm going to try and use a tier 5 guard as well. Ooh, that looks actually pretty cool. Let's, um, let's do something with that as well. And uh, we've unlocked a, a couple more pretty cool looking grips as well. So that's, that's quite nice. And then also we have some pommels here. Oh, another tier 5. Ooh, look at this, a 230 difficulty weapon. I mean, it's not going to, it's really not going to do anything, is it? It's really not going to do very well. Anyway, let's just get some uh, Thamaskeen steel right here, because I have enough fine steel to be able to do something like that. And there you go. All right, let's, um, let's see what happens. I, I don't think we're going to be get, oh, 
We actually gained a bonus? <laughs> Are you serious? We gained plus one thrusting damage? That is insane. Okay, I have no idea how that even happened. Anyway, we're just going to be crafting a whole bunch here. These are mainly to sell, so I'm not going to be naming them, but mark my words. I will be naming some things in the future. So I'm just going to create a whole bunch, and then we're going to see exactly what we can do. So let's see if I can... Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, inventory, inventory. Okay, so let's have a look and see how much they actually are, because they could be absolutely useless. <gasps> oh, hello there. Okay, yes. Um, yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh, that is nice. Oh, yes. 111,000. I don't think I'm actually even going to have any marketplace that is going to give me enough. That is hilarious. Okay, I'm going to ransom all my prisoners, actually, just so that I can get all of them gone so we can increase our speed to the next fief. Because I'd love to be able to take another fief in this episode if I can manage it. So let's see if I can do that. I'm going to need no traits because, obviously, we're, we're basically, uh, well, basically maxed out right now. It's going to be very difficult for me to actually gain anything at this point. Oh, look at this. We, we've... We've done a, oh, look at this. We've done a very good job in um, com completely surrounding the Batanians. Completely by accident, of course. <laughs> completely by accident. I was not a, not expecting that. All right. So, uh, yeah, we're going to uh, see who will get this. We're going to be giving it to Desporion. Seems good to me. Seems good to me. Pretty happy with that. Generally, I would say that the automated way of giving things to people is actually quite good because it will usually be quite logical in the way that it works so it will give a fief to a vassal that is relatively close by or has the resources to be able to do that and i quite like that in comparison to doing it the other way where we take ownership over it and then potentially you know try to uh try to give it to someone that is deserving but obviously that's the point we need to be a bit careful of that as well we need to make sure that our relation doesn't go super super down so in in which case i'm probably going to be um, donating a little bit of influence to those people and then seeing if that will help to uh stem the tide of people potentially leaving because they most likely will soon enough Ooh, look at that. We have an army of Batanians going off there. I'm not entirely sure where they're going to go. I would assume they're going to go to Lagata, which in my opinion is actually fine. I don't have a problem with that. The Southern Empire is now declaring war on us as well. Ugh, to be expected, you interlopers. Okay, well, whatever the case. Oh, Ergeon's actually coming back. Is he running from Fenton? Are you seriously running from Fenton? There's only one guy there. <laughs> well, actually, there's two. Chase on. Chase on as well. Chase on is chasing them. Yes, haha. -ha. Hilarious. Aren't I? Yes, I am an absolute riot with my wonderfully awkward jokes. Yes, lovely. Anyway, <laughs> we're going to be trying to take down the walls here. We're almost done. We're almost done. Thankfully, it's just walls level two. So it's not actually that big a deal. But if these guys can somehow rope the garrison into... They're willing to pay two dinars. Look at that. But yeah, if, they, if they're willing to rope... The garrison into a uh, into a conflict with us then we're probably gonna have some problems but um yeah as you can see catapults not as effective in my opinion as ballistas as you can see these guys were mostly using catapults and they are just too inaccurate in my opinion to really have the uh, damage throughput to be able to get those those um pieces of siege equipment destroyed as soon as you would possibly want it because ballistas are going to have much more much more dps they're going to have a lot of accuracy and they're going to be really quick to replace as well and that makes a huge difference anyway let's do this this is actually the first time i think we've actually done a siege in maranath itself Ooh, the water has reflections oh yes we like seeing that that is for sure i, I know that seems like such a a standard feature, you know, in terms of graphical options nowadays. But uh, in Warband, no, no, no. You did have some reflections, I think, but for the most part, the textures were quite gnarly. You know, they were 
not um, not the best, but it obviously is a very old game at this point, you know? It's a very old game, so... Anyway, let's go and see if I can maybe get inside. I wouldn't mind going in on my horse. Oh! Okay, that's... That's a mistake. <laughs> oh, oh, dear. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, come on, horsey. Back up a little bit here. Back up a little bit. Not too much, just a little. I just need you to back up just a little bit. There we go. Okay, perfect. That was um, a little bit too confident. Thank you very much. Okay, there we go. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. Go. Oh, yeah. I, I remember now. Yes. Horseback combat with a one-handed weapon is really difficult in Bannerlord. And I, I don't even know why, to be honest. I think it is because of the arc. The arc of your attack is so significantly um, raised, it's it's a bit weird because when you go into attack with your one-handed weapon, I found that immediately, by the way, when I first started playing Bannerlord from Warband, it had that it had that angle of attack whenever you are on horseback. And I thought to myself, why? What, what's happening here? Because I'm riding exactly the same as I was in Warband, and it was not giving me the damage. It was just completely either missing or doing such minor damage that it basically made no sense in me actually attacking to begin with. Now, what I'm really interested about is the fact that I haven't actually been killed yet. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why. I really don't know why. Okay. Let's see if I can maybe just do some more damage here. Taken down, taken down. Okay, well, um, yeah, that's the funny thing. I'm actually not sure why we are having so many difficulties right here. It's because the Batanians are showing a united front. Have you noticed that? Look at this. Look at the craziness that they're sh uh, that they're displaying here. L look at this. It's just crazy. They're, they're completely blocking off the avenues of attack. And I'm actually unsure whether we are going to be able to even achieve a victory here. I'm going to try and throw some more units in there but I am actually considering retreating at this point. If I am unable to cause enough morale damage for us to get any kind of footing inside the battlements themselves, then I think we are definitely going to be in a situation where we may need to retreat. And that's the reason why Maranath is such a difficult thief to take, because it seems like the defenders are extremely passionate about their, well, defensive formation. Oh, look at this! Yes, the Vlandians, they're going in there. They're going in, and uh, I can only just be very thankful that we have more units than the opponent. That's basically the only reason why we're um, having a, a decent success ratio right here, considering the combat strength. But um, it was not looking good, let's just say that. It really was not looking good halfway through this. But thankfully it is looking a little better now, so I'm pretty happy with that. Let's just speed things up a little bit more, see if we can actually penetrate this line of defense as well, because it seems like the other side has done a decent job of that. Let's have a look. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, no, actually, it might still be a bit problematic. But, uh, oh, it, yeah. See, now, here's the thing. The Flandians are doing this weird thing where they basically uh, retreat and then go back in, retreat and go back in. I don't really... I don't really agree on that, because on the one hand, it might consolidate your forces and you might be able to then, you know, more accurately and more efficiently be able to group up with your with your comrades and try to eliminate on a, a united front. But for the most part, basically all it does is de delay, you know, it just delays your attack and makes it much less likely for you to get inside, because just look at, look at all these... Look at all these units right here. They're basically just standing there. 
if they all rushed in right now and went around the side, as you can see. Look at look at the side here. It's completely free. They could just run right by. Look, look, look. They're actually doing that now. Fantastic. Perfect. Oh, it, it's listening to me. Look at that. The game is actually listening to me. Can you believe it? Yeah. Can't issue orders while dead. Of course. Of course. Oh, well. Never mind. Never mind. Can't do, can't do much about that. Can't do much about it. Oh, there we go. Now they have finally gotten inside. And that is indeed a victory for us. Lovely. We've taken Maranath, one of the biggest fiefs that the Batanians have available to them, and that is going to be exceptional for us. It's going to be very, very good to maintain control of this. And this is basically the beginning of the end for the Batanians, in my opinion. Should I take this? Should I take Maranath? I think I might take Maranath for myself. I think I'm going to do that, mainly because if I take it for myself, I'm going to be able to build a smithy here, and the smithy is going to be extremely lucrative very, very lucrative indeed. Okay, so let's have a look what's going on here. Vartan is over there, and Ergion is over there as well. And we also have Remtoil Castle. Wait, wait a minute. They only have two car two towns left. I was going to say castles. They actually have three castles left. That is very cool. I love seeing that. That is, you know, that's the kind of thing that you really like to see at this late point in the game. You really want to see an enemy faction that you've been working against for quite some time. You know, they've been a little bit sparse here and there in terms of their war declarations, and they've been a little bit tentative here and there about that kind of stuff. And then in the end, you decide, okay, I'm going to go hard against these guys. And then when you go hard against them, boom, then then you just you just take all of their stuff. And that's, that's kind of what you want, isn't it? That is kind of what you want to do. So let me actually just sell most of this stuff here. And you know what I'm actually going to do as well? I'm going to do something that uh, generally I don't tend to do that often, but it is kind of a treat when we do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unlock the marketplace and we're just going to hit auto equip and boom. We just spent 600,000. <laughs> yeah, we just spent 600,000 to upgrade all of our forces. And um, I'm, I'm actually kind of happy with this. I'm actually pretty happy with this, so I will now be selling our crafted weapons. And, uh, oh, some of them actually got equipped. Mm. All right, so I've gone all the way back to Bruce now, and uh, finally I found all of them, as you can quite clearly see here. And uh, th this is, um, I'm, I'm definitely going to need to do some inventory management. Um, but I basically just want to do this and there you go. So that's it. That's all I want to do. <laughs> oh, what a mess, eh? What a mess. But at least we got huge upgrades for all of our companions. That is all I was really wanting to do. And I think that's going to be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching. Next time we'll try to eliminate the Batanians once and for all, potentially. We'll see if that actually happens. And did I just say potentially? Maybe. Maybe. Don't rewind the video and see whether I said potentially. Next time we'll try to eliminate the Batanians once and for all, potentially. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. Anyway, <laughs> I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.